Hi, I'm Christian Jewell, and in today's tips and tricks video, we're going to look at the difference between open and closed edges in Esprit 2017. First, we'll create a pocket feature by selecting our face, going into our Create Features Edit Features, and choosing Pocket. This will create us a one pocket, and we can see the Esprit is automatically recognized open areas of the pocket and define them with the dash line. Closed areas of the pocket are being defined as a solid line. Next, we can choose our one pocket and apply a pocketing operation by going into our solid mill traditional and choosing pocketing. We'll say OK with the parameters here and create our actual toolpath. Looking at our pocketing toolpath, we can see that the open areas of our pocket allow the tool to pass through the boundary while the closed areas are restricting the tool's movement. Let's say that we were planning to remove the material on these J sections on the left and right hand side with a different operation, and therefore we don't want our tool to pass through these boundaries on the left and right hand side. In this case, we would close off the actual pocket. To do this, we'll need to ensure that we have sub-elements and highlight mode turned on. With those enabled, we can select the actual sub-element of our pocket. Clicking once, Esprit is asking me if I would like to select the pocket, I'll right click to say no, and my second selection, Esprit is asking me if I would like to choose the actual sub-element of the pocket. In this case, I'll left click to say yes, and look into my properties window. Under attributes, I can see that the open edge is currently set to true. Changing this to false and hitting enter, we'll now close off that section of the pocket and it'll be shown with a solid line. We can also choose our one pocket and in our properties window, browse the particular sub-element we're looking for. In this case, we'll go to two of 18, expand and look under attributes and change the open edge here from true to false. Now we've closed off both the left and right hand side of our pocket, we can rebuild the operation. By right clicking on my operation, choosing machining rebuild, I've now rebuilt the toolpath to the changes in my pocketing feature, and I'm ready to simulate. Going up, I can choose my simulation toolbar and choose play. Now we will take a look at another example showing facing on the same part. In this example, we will use the same part but with a one chain already created. Let's say we wanted to create a spiraling pattern for a facing operation, but since facing doesn't have this option, in this case we could use an open pocketing operation with profit milling to achieve this. First we will open the edges by grabbing the start and end segment with control, and then using control and shift on any segment in between them to highlight all elements in between the start and end segment. We could also just choose the sub-element while holding shift to grab all sections. Once we've done that, we've opened up the chain and we can apply a pocketing operation. Selecting our one chain in our solid mill traditional and then choosing pocketing. In this case, we could use a face mill instead of a standard end mill for our pocketing operation. And we're going to go to our pocket tab. Here we can see settings dedicated to open pocketing. Our open edge offset controls the distance the tool can move outside the open boundary of the feature and can be expressed as either a distance or a percentage of the tool's radius. Then we have our lead in and lead out distance. These can be used anytime the tool needs to retract in an open edge area and these distances are measured directly from the defined open edge offset. With those settings correct, we can say OK and apply our toolpath. Zooming out, we can see that our tool is spiraling in with the face mill, removing that material on the top of our part. Now we can go to our simulation and choose play. That's it for today's tip video. We hope you enjoyed it. Don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter and stay tuned for other tips and tricks from DP Technology.